Hey, everybody. Nobody. <laughs> Hopefully, somebody will join. I'm getting some messages on Facebook from my moderators. Let's see. Hopefully, people are getting... Oh, good. Some of you got the notice. Okay. All right. So, we have... Sandy, hi, Candace, Kay, Stacy, Eileen, Susan, Olivia, Elizabeth, Mary, hey, Nancy, hey, Tracy O. So nice to see you again, Tracy O. Brittany, Sally, Sherry, Suzette, Judy, Carmen, all right, Debbie, Ink, Paper, Scissors, Fun, Jonna. Maureen, Cheryl, Dee Dee, Marilyn, okay, and Marie, Angelique, Marilyn, all right, Kathleen, hey everyone, how's everybody doing? This is my first live after my surgery. Hey Val, how are you? Yeah, I was having some trouble with orientation, so I just canceled that and started over again because I haven't gone live in a while, so sometimes I get rusty. Okay, well, I wanted to share with you guys some happy mail that I have received because I haven't been live since November 19th. Um, well, I had surgery, and I'm glad to say that I'm recovering fine. Everything is going well. You know, um, it's been a blessing to have all your prayers and to have so many people send me such beautiful cards and I want to share with you some of the things that some folks have shared with me. And Nancy just did a live. So thank you, Nancy, for letting everybody know that I would be going live. Because I think that helped to get some folks over here. Hey, there's Charlotte. Hi, Ryan. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So huh, I have so much to tell you guys. So much to get caught up on. And I'm so glad that we're finally together again. I missed you guys so much. Um, I went back to work on Tuesday. And so I'm glad tomorrow's Friday so that I can get rested up again. Um, but everything seems to be healing the way it's supposed to heal. And it's a, it's a blessing. It really, really is. So um, in case you didn't know, you guys... I was surprised by Nancy and Ryan. They came to visit me in person on Saturday, which I was not expecting them to come to me in person. They traveled three and a half hours from Nancy's house to get to my house. And so it was a huge surprise. And I just want to say thank you to Ryan and Nancy for going out of your way to come see me. You know, there's plenty of things you all could have done at Nancy's house, but you took the time to come to my side of the state, and <laughs> we got to hang out at my house on Saturday. Ryan knocked on the door. I love you guys. Ryan knocked on the door, and I was kind of like standing behind the door, and my husband opened it, and Ryan's standing there with a bag from Sinful Sweets, his bakery that he owns in Rochester, New York. Yeah, and uh he said, I have a delivery for Tracy. And I peeked my head around the corner and I saw him. I said, oh my God, it's Ryan. And I said, let him in, let him in. <laughs> yeah, so that was like shocking to me. And then he brought in some delicious cheesecake and yummy cupcakes and macarons and little cake pops. Oh, yum, yum, yum. Yes, it was so surprising. And we did a live on my channel. We fooled some of you guys. You weren't sure what was going on, right? But um, that was fun. And then um, after the live, Nancy and Ryan stayed uh, at a hotel with Leah. Leah was there too, Nancy's daughter. She is so sweet and so polite and so well behaved. Ryan is too. He's very polite and well behaved. <laughs> I can't say the same about Nancy. She's pretty ornery. 
So yeah, we had fun. We had so much fun. We went um, Sunday morning to the um, variety store, the discount store, where they sell a lot of Steeler merchandise. And of course, Nancy was in heaven. She got to buy a whole bunch of Steeler stuff. That was so much fun. And then we went to my mom and dad's house and had a sit down Sunday dinner, complete with stuffing and sweet potatoes. And I think there was mashed potatoes too. She had two kinds of potatoes, I think. Corn, I don't know, lima beans, I don't know. Pork, roast, it was yummy. It was delicious. And that was fun and it was nice outside. That way we got to take some pictures outside and then uh, Nancy and Ryan went to Hershey's Chocolate World after they left my house. So that was cool. Yeah, I mean, you've got to visit Hershey's if you're in Pennsylvania. That's a fun place to go. But it was like the highlight of my year too, just to be able to meet you guys and share that time with our FSC folks doing the question and answers. That was a lot of fun, and it was like a once-in-a-lifetime thing. So hopefully, after we get through this winter and after we get through COVID, I'll be able to go over to Nancy's side of the state and visit her and Leah and Xavier. So hopefully that'll um, be something that we can plan in the future. So thanks again. Yes. <laughs> And all of Nancy's friends asked her if Ryan was her boyfriend. So, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. It was a lot of fun. So how special that this hobby of ours has brought us all together as friends. Uh, I've met some of you in person. I know I've met Charlotte in person. And I met Tracy O in person. And so how nice it is that we, you know, can sometimes actually get to meet in person. And I think that we'll continue to grow our FSC group and we'll continue to, um, you know, have opportunities to see each other together. And, you know, that's so much fun. And meeting people in this crafting, card making world is what prompted me to start my Facebook, I mean, my YouTube, because I met some ladies at a craft, I mean, at a holiday party in Pittsburgh that was put on by a Pittsburgh-based craft company, card company. And I, you know, I'm still friends with those people today. Yeah, we're like extended family. And so um, I thought, I want to keep in touch with these ladies. So started the YouTube channel and was doing lives and we would all get together and just chat and make cards together. And so that's how it all started. And actually, Nancy was one of the first people I talked to through YouTube. So it's super, super exciting. People from all over the world, you know, coming together and making new friendships. I appreciate you guys so much. I appreciate Nancy and Ryan, Stacy and Chow. Um... You know, Stacy and Chow knew about it. They were in on it. They knew that this was all going down. And they did a really good job of keeping that secret. <laughs> so um, Chow has done so much to help, um, you know, FSC grow. And Stacy does a great job of bringing us new ideas and new sponsors. And speaking of sponsors... We have a Stamp Wars coming up. The next Stamp Wars is December the 12th. And it's Stamp Wars number six. It will be at seven o'clock on Nancy Stamps on YouTube. So please make sure to mark your calendar uh, so that you can be with us on December the 12th. Ryan is the host, as Nancy said in her um, live. So that'll be fun. And it's a mystery stamp contest. So me and Stacy and Chow and Nancy will all be creating a card or some project. Last time it was tags. Um, and we only have one hour to do it. 
and our host, Ryan, will be issuing sabotages along the way. It's things like, you know, you can't use your stamping platform, you can't use your embossing buddy. All kinds of stuff can kind of throw a wrench in things. So it's fun, um, it's stressful, but it's okay, Chow. You're gonna do great. Chow, I mean, she worries about it, and then she like knocks it out of the park. And she'll have it done before any of us like blink our eyes. So she is like amazing. And her talents are incredible. Chow has her channel. Stacy and Renee have a channel. Of course, Ryan, he's like skyrocketing into fame with his YouTube channel. And of course, Nancy, who brought us all together with her channel. Um, so it's exciting. We have card swap open right now. So if you're a member of the FSC on Facebook, you have the opportunity to sign up for card swap. And basically you have to input your information into a form and you have to submit it only one time. Don't do it more than once. And then Stacy will be in touch. She um, has done a great job of organizing it and she'll put people together in groups based on when they sign up and you'll get notified of who your card swap group is and you make a card for the people in your group so it's usually four or five people usually it's five so you would make four cards and send them to those four people in your group by december 20th and this month the theme is birthday and cards must be mailed by december 20th so hopefully we get some more folks signing up for that. If you're not a member of the FSC, what are you waiting for? It's Foiling Snobs Club on Facebook, but we're not snobs, but we do foil. We also stamp and create other crafts like, you know, pouring paint. And I know there's a lot of people who have a lot of wonderful crafty ideas. Um, we share that together. All right. And, um, Stacy said there's a unit in the FSC group that has all the info you need and we've been doing six people per group lately. Okay, thank you, Stacy. So five cards. Yeah. All right. Um, okay. I wanted to share with you um, something that Bernie sent me. You guys all know Bernie. Um, oh, Charlotte. Well, we're sorry that you had to go to the hospital, Charlotte, and you're, we're praying for you. And uh, definitely wishing you all the best. And, um, you know, stay strong and we're here for you. If you need anything, just let us know. So, um, Bernie sent me a care package. And she sent me this awesome card. I don't know if I can get close enough to the camera without going out of screen. Here we go. So, it's one of those hero arts, I think, um, scene builders. I'm not exactly sure what they're called. I don't have this set or any of them, but I know Stacy and Nancy both have some of these sets, but she made a slimline card with a really pretty sky. I'm not sure. That looks like speckled egg ink. And then we've got the cornfield and a scarecrow and some gorgeous pumpkins. And she did some kind of inlay die cut technique. It says give thanks. And it's got the hay bale and the wagon wheel, which is popped up. So what a beautiful card, right? Isn't it gorgeous? Good job, Bernie. You're so talented, lady. You are so talented. Okay. And she made me another card. She made me like three cards. This one has fruit and it's embossed. Okay. So it's got that texture. Yes, it's a stampscape from Hero Arts. That's correct, Stacy. And um, it looks like we've got the Distress Ink, maybe black soot or something in the background, maybe some kind of gray Distress Ink. And then she looked like she colored it in with either Distress, D distress Oxide or maybe a watercolor paint or something, but... So she embossed it with white embossing powder, and then she colored in each one of these, like pink grapefruits. Aren't they pretty? I think it's so pretty. And like little yellow flowers and green leaves, super pretty. And then she layered it on um, some 
silver glitter paper. So pretty. Bernie is super talented. Yes, she is. Okay, and then she sent me some stuff that I can finish off and make some goodies with. She sent me this beautiful panel, uh, Lavinia Stamps, which um, is so cool. Uh, a mermaid, and she um, uh, looks like a lot of glittery accents, uh, you know, Wink Estella or what's the other one called? Uh, Spectrum Noir, Sparkle. Uh, That's strange. I didn't change anything on my setup. I don't know. I don't know what happened. Hello, can you hear me? Anything now? Sound is back. All right, just so you guys know, internet connectivity problems. So if it does happen that it seems like it buffers a little bit or like that weird thing that just happened with the sound going out. It could have something to do with the fact that my MiFi hotspot, and for some reason, it's like every night at 8 o'clock, it just doesn't want to connect anymore. So I better fast forward and just get moving. She made these cute little tags that she stamped, which I can make into Christmas cards. Yeah, my internet like I said, guys, it's, it's just been giving me a lot of problems. We've got some really cute stamps. It says, time to get your big girl pants on. I am so crafty. I sweat glitter. And I met you. I liked you. I love you. I'm keeping you. So super cute. And these might be part of my giveaway in the future. Um, She sent me this Sizzix Kaleidoscope embossing folder which is 3d and this is going to be part of my giveaway i am planning on doing a giveaway um, as part of this video sort of like i'm back i'm so excited to be with you guys and i want to do a giveaway so this is really cool embossing folder she did a whole bunch of cutouts for me um, a whole bunch of pretty snowflakes so that's great i can use those to make a card. There's all kinds of snowflakes here. And two um, sentiments, they're the same sentiment, but she just designed them in different ways. One, they both say, let it snow. Isn't that cool? She's so generous. She sent me um, some real pretty paper. This is foil cardstock. This is beautiful um, vellum which I had never saw anything like this before. It's vellum with flowers on it. That'll make some pretty cards for sure. And then all oh, this beautiful holographic foil cardstock, you guys. Thank you, Bernie. I know you're not on here tonight, but I hope that you catch this the next time you're watching YouTube. She sent me some beautiful um, glitter paper. And look at this holographic. I mean, woo, blind me. Isn't that beautiful? I love it. Love it, love it, love it. Okay. Okay, so that. And then she sent me this cute stamp set with dies. And it's um, Crafter's Companion. 
It's got a girl and it's a birthday girl and she's got her little dog. And so this will be part of the giveaway too. So I'm excited. I'm excited. And I have um, lots of stuff to give away. Nancy and Ryan can attest to that. They have been to my house and seen my two craft rooms, plus my overflow area in my bedroom. And um, they know that I need to get rid of some stuff because I'm never going to use what I have, all the stuff that I have. And, and I definitely want to share with you guys. So what we'll do at the end of this video... Um, once it's posted to my YouTube, just go ahead and um, leave a comment. That's all you have to do to be entered into the contest. And I'll pick a winner um, on Saturday. So that's what that's what that plan is. Okay, I want to share with you just a small sample of the amazing box of goodies sent to me by Cindy Ollendorf. She sent me a, now get this, I'm not kidding you guys, 55 pound box. It came UPS and it had all these wonderful stamp sets, dyes, glitter, nouveau stuff, markers, um, just amazing, incredible, beautiful. Cindy, I can't thank you enough for your generosity Again, this is just a small sample of some of the stuff that she gave me. Something, this is Pretty Pink Posh. This is Stamps of Life and it has dyes to go with it. Lots of Stamps of Life. This is a big thank you. This is um, Alta New Sentiments and Quotes. Stamps of Life, big words, which make great card sentiments. Stamps of Life Candy Cane Collection, Stamps of Life, Happy Birthday, uh, Hero Arts, some big sentiments, and I think this is Penny Black. It's a red rubber stamp with a branch and some stars, and I think this one, I don't know if this is Penny Black or Hero Arts, but isn't it beautiful? I'm telling you, it was a 55 pound box. It had so many good things in it. And it was a little, it was a little, it was, it was a little amazing to me. It was extremely amazing to me. So Nancy and Ryan helped me to um, go through the box and sort things out. And there will be prizes made available from what was in that box. So, yeah, I got so much stuff and um, just top quality. I mean, she even sent it, you know, in the envelopes, you know, the stamp storage envelopes. So, Cindy, thank you so much for being so generous. There's going to be lots of giveaways coming up. You guys, I have 1.71K subscribers. I know, Carmen, it was so generous of her. And um, I have almost 2,000 subscribers. Ryan already has 2,000 subscribers. He's like Rocket Man, which we're so happy for him. Um, yeah, Elizabeth, isn't that beautiful, that branch? I love it. Um, anyway, so when I hit 2,000 subscribers, there's going to be a lot of giveaways. But there's going to be a giveaway for tonight because I just really want to show my appreciation for all of you and for um, how wonderful you all are. Yeah, I'm so excited. Yay. So excited, you guys. Okay. Let's look through some happy mail. Oh, my goodness. Lots of happy mail. Okay. So my last giveaway was um, from Stamp Wars. And um, it was a... A bird cage with some bird themed um, stamps that went with it. And so um, Suzanne Anderson sent me this and she made a card for me based on um, the things that I gave her in the giveaway. Wasn't that nice of her? That was so sweet. Stacy made this card for me uh, as a get well card and it has um, a beautiful butterfly cutout. Embossing folder, foil. Ooh, so pretty, Stacy. Thank you. 
please ignore my nails, you guys. I had to get them taken off for surgery. Well, I was allowed to keep my nails, but I had to take off my polish. So I'm going tomorrow to get my nails done. So it is what it is. Um, this is from Chow. Chow is super talented with her foiling. I don't know if you can see how pretty that is. And this uh, foiled card has some beautiful edging and some beautiful um, glitter in the background. That, thank you, Chow. So pretty. This one came all the way from Germany. It's from Stephanie Heiler. And I hope I said your name right, Stephanie. But look how cool this is. I've been saving this, Charlotte. It's It's been um, happy mail for about the last couple of weeks, all right? So it's not just from today. <laughs> but Stephanie has done a beautiful job um, with this pocket expanding card. Isn't it pretty? It's got this beautiful flower and some pearls. And it came like this all the way from Germany and no damage done. So that's always a plus. Super. Okay, we've got a Christmas card that I just had to share with you. It's so cute. It's from Stephanie Walters and she um, designed this cute Christmas card using the kitchen sink stamp gingerbread family. And I love it because it's got a lot of 3D. It's got the 3D reef. It's got, you know, um, this cute um, foam candy cane. And her gingerbread man is perfect. I mean, it is perfect. It's even got the little icing around the feet and arms. It's got the three little dots. It's got his smiley face. So cute, right? And then on the inside, she sent me some gumdrops so that the next time I make a card with this set from Kitchen Sink Stamps, I have some gumdrops that I can use. Yeah, isn't it awesome? It's so pretty. So thank you, Stephanie. She makes such beautiful cards, and I love getting her cards. Okay, this one is from Ryan. So Ryan uh, sent me this Christmas card. Super pretty using Simon Hurley's Christmas baubles. Um, and it's cute. It's got the signature Ryan trademark matting. Um, looks like it's got like dots. I don't know if that's pattern paper, but it's really pretty. And the uh, lots of shimmer. Ooh, I don't know if you can see that shimmer. And uh, just really, I like that color, Ryan. You did a great job. As always, it's got beautiful handwriting too. Thank you, Ryan. Okay, this cute card comes from um, Jean Morin. She uh, made this really cute card with the band-aids, the rainbow colored band-aids. Look how adorable, you guys. I love it. Wishing you a speedy recovery. And it says, hope you feel better soon. Yes, I am feeling better. Um, Mary, uh, Mary Landis, Mary Landers, I'm sorry, sent me this beautiful Christmas card with baubles. Mary does great work and I love getting her cards and she really went to a lot of work here, you guys, with a beautiful background and some pine boughs and these, um, Bobbles are 3D and they have bows on them. Oh, they're so pretty. They're just gorgeous. What a great card. Thank you, Mary. So sweet of you. You're a sweetheart. I got a really beautiful card. Um, this is from um, Suzette. And Suzette is on the live tonight. Suzette, your card is gorgeous. When it came... I showed my family how beautiful it was and how the die cut that you did, the little um, poinsettia leaves, like you can pop up the, it's so pretty, Suzette. It's just gorgeous. It's a nice uh, square card with a beautiful sparkly sentiment. It says Merry Christmas in the middle and some beautiful um, stencil um, sequins around there. So pretty. Look how it just shines, you guys. 
I love it. She did foiling on this card. Yes. Yes, indeed. Thank you, Suzette. It's beautiful. Um, I know Nancy just did a uh, sort of show and tell with kitchen sink stamp products. I wanted to show you this card. This is made by Lisa from Kitchen Sink Stamps. And look how pretty that is. That uh, glitter paper is really shiny and sparkly. And she um, put a background stamp. And she also, yes, from Local King Rubber Stamps, I'm sorry. This is um, one of her stamp sets. And I think Nancy has this stamp set. But um, look how pretty. Look at the detail, you guys, of this coloring um, from Lisa from Local King Rubber Stamps. It's beautiful. And I don't know whether she used her magic markers or her mushrooms to make that coloring. But thank you, Lisa. It's beautiful uh, from Local King Rubber Stamps. Yes gorgeous here is a card from Stephanie I love this card Stephanie Walter sent me this beautiful beautiful butterfly card I love it the purple that butterfly is gorgeous it looks like it was done on acetate with um, or maybe that's glitter paper I can't really tell it's so pretty Aww. What happened to Jen? I, I should be watching the, um, oh, Jen, your cat. I'm so sorry, Jen. Sorry you had to put your cat to sleep. That's so sad when you lose a pet and it's like losing a family member, your fur baby. Yeah, I'm so sorry. Okay, this one is from Sally and she created, um, a get well card for me with some beautiful details this um, embossed in gold flower spray with some butterflies and some rhinestones just a lot of work it's matted several layers it's got a sentiment that's matted and ink blending in the background such beautiful colors you guys know purple is my favorite color so that's beautiful um, this card is from, I think this one is from, yeah, it's from Mary, Mary Landers. Uh, this is so pretty. She has the butterfly and then the acetate behind the butterfly. And the acetate is, is like, it went through an embossing folder or something because it's, it has texture. And then the, um, stamp in the background, this is embossed too. It's so pretty. It's beautiful. Thank you, Mary. She sent me so many beautiful cards lately. I love them. Just love them. Oh, this is from Jean. Whoops. This is from Jean Morin. A beautiful um, Christmas card. What I think is so cool about this card, it's got that mirror cardstock for the ornament. And then behind it, there's glitter. So it has like glitter cardstock cutouts that she probably hand laid in there. So thank you, Jean. That is such a pretty Christmas card. I love it. And then Tracy Gambino made me this beautiful card for Christmas. It's got um, Santa's workshop. She used that um, Marvy snow pen. Isn't that cool? It's got a lot of snow on it. She colored it in and put some... Um, sparkly shiny on top of it so pretty thank you so much thank you so much everybody okay there's a couple more i want to show you okay this one is from our friend deb the craft maven and this is a card that stands up like an easel card and it's got beautiful purple yeah um butterfly uh, it's got so many layers too um beautiful purple matte back here with embossing and sparkle uh, this is another layer with foiling and then this looks like um die cut Ugh, 
so detailed. I know. I love it. I love the the colors and the butterflies. And this is a beautiful card. Thank you so much, Deb. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, getting down to the bottom pile here, you guys. Just bear with me. So June sent me this beautiful big, it's a big five by seven card with a butterfly. I love it. Um, yeah. And this butterfly has, uh, looks like distress oxide background paper. And then the butterfly went through an embossing folder and maybe it was a butterfly embossing folder. Yeah. And it's got, um, gold. This might've been colored in with the gold ink i'm not really sure but it's really really pretty and it's 3d look at that you open it up and the butterfly flies out at you it's not creative super creative it's the same distress oxide purple lots of pretty purple <clears throat> june also made me a beautiful christmas card these all came separate you guys they didn't all come the same day the, this is, you know, over time, but look at the detail on this one. Holy moly. And then inside it has the cutouts. So pretty. So gorgeous. I love it. And she sent me some other like um, cutouts and stuff, you know, that I could use. Everything matches so well together. Oh my gosh. All right, let's see. What else do we got here? Okay. Oh, yes. We're almost done. Almost done with the Happy Meal. Um, Stephanie made me this beautiful Christmas card. Stephanie Walter. And it's purple. And it's got that beautiful watercolor and a sentiment. So, so pretty. Beautiful foil in the background here. Now, beautiful the colors. Look at that. Perfectly watercolored. Just perfect. All right. Um, ciao. Made me a get well card with the beautiful flowers that she colored in. And it's got the purples, which I love. So thank you, ciao. It's so pretty. And the sentiment is foiled. It says, get well soon. Aw, thank you. Stacy sent me a Christmas card. Isn't it pretty? Stacy's been like foiling and hot foiling like crazy, you guys. Every night she shows us more and more that she's done with her cards and her hot foiling. It's beautiful. She's very talented. Okay, this one is from... Uh, Jerry, Jerry, are you on tonight? Jerry made me this beautiful, um, thankful card. And the leaf is three-dimensional. And it looks like a real leaf. Looks like a real leaf. And she said how thankful she is for the FSC. This is foiled. Beautiful, Jerry. Beautiful. Um... Okay, uh, Sherry. Sherry, I think, is on tonight. Sherry made me this beautiful Get Well Soon card. Uh, it's so pretty, and it's so sparkly. And it's got die cut, inlaid, beautiful, pretty purple. It just reminds me of, like, a, a folk art quilt or something. Isn't that pretty? Thank you, Sherry. It's beautiful. Okay. I got a Christmas card here from Dawn Jenkins. Beautiful, shiny, foiled snowflake. Perfect. Yes, Sherry, I love it. And this one is from Meta. So Meta um, had some fun with Indra. So this is the butterfly moth that was used in Stamp Wars Littles. And she created such a beautiful card 
with watercoloring and um, gems. And the moth or Indra is um, heat embossed with gold. These are the Local King rubber stamp um, corner die cuts. So that's something you can get at Local King rubber stamps. And look at her handwriting, you guys. I'm not kidding you. Wow. And she um, stamped the butterfly on the outside, too. So that is gorgeous. Thank you, Meta. I love it. And then today, today, this is the bottom of the pile, but not, certainly not least of all, just last to be opened from um, Jen DeCarlos, all the way from Texas. A get well soon card that was foiled. Ooh, isn't that pretty? Perfectly foiled. FSC approved. Brrr, isn't that gorgeous? Get well soon. And then here we go. Debadoo. 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 Oh, this is so classy, you guys. Look at that. Woohoo. Isn't that beautiful? So it's got um, embossed paper and little rhinestones, a little flower, and that cute little thread that Stacy always uses on her cards that I don't have any, and then get well soon. It's just so clean and simple. It's so pretty. I love it. Thank you, Deb. Thanks so much. Appreciate everybody. I know Nancy also has some cards that were sent. Oh, wait a minute. I lied. There's one more. Ah, look how pretty. This is from Lynn at, Kit, uh, not Lynn, Maria. I get my people confused, you guys. This is from Maria at Kitchen Sink Stamps. Isn't that pretty? Of course, that's all Kitchen Sink Stamps stuff. It's beautiful sparkly with that foil and purple love the purple thank you maria so okay so you guys can see i've been getting a lot of well wishes i certainly appreciate everything i appreciate everybody who took the time to make me a card it means the world to me um I was joking with Nancy and Ryan because my husband said, you're getting like six cards a day. He's like, what are you going to do with all those cards? So I said, don't you worry. That, those are from all my friends in the stamping world. And, and they mean the world to me. So don't you worry and don't touch. Those are my cards. <laughs> I love them. <laughs> he can yell all he wants. So I know that Nancy just did a little show and tell with Local King Rubber Stamps, and I know she showed you the calm set and the spread. I want to show you something that Chow and I both purchased, this, um, this Cardinal set. So soon, hopefully, maybe this weekend, yes, they're beautiful cards. I love them all, and I'll... I'll never get rid of them, you know. Uh, you know, Nancy and Ryan can tell you I don't get rid of much stuff. So, um, I know that I'll have them for a long, long time. So, Chow and I both purchased this Cardinal set from Local King Rubber Stamps. And we're going to do probably Facebook um, in our FSC group. We'll probably do that where we color and make a card together on a duo. So I want to let you know that that'll be coming up soon. And what I love about this set with cardinals, it's got this big cardinal and this smaller cardinal. It has snowflakes, it has season's greetings, and then the dies. So there's a lot here that can be used to create a beautiful card. And it doesn't have to be just winter. I mean, because cardinals are around all the time. 
And when Chow and I, it was part of a, at Local King Rubber Stamps, she usually has different specials. And her special was, if you bought the combo, she would send you a free stamp. And the free stamp is the um, winter time. So it has five stamps with a pine bow, um, pine cone. Um, this looks like, um, has little berries on it. I forget what this is called. But there's also some sentiments. And I love this sentiment. It says, when you come to the end of your rope, tie a knot and hang on. And that's um, Franklin D. Roosevelt. And um, we're going to do a duo together. Right, Chow? We're going to do that together. Chow, are you still up for that? Me and you together with the Local King rubber stamps. Looking forward to doing that together. I also got this pretty background stamp from Local King Rubber Stamp. It has blue, well, it has snowflakes. You can do it any color you want, right? But um, the sample here on the envelope shows it with um, like a blue background and the white snowflakes. How pretty is that? Yeah, and then we can set, put a sentiment in the middle. So that's a really cool background stamp. I showed you guys trees um, that I purchased before, but in case you missed it, I'll show you real quick. Sorry, I have a die here. I wanna get the die out of the way so you can see better. So um, you guys know I love my tree stamps. And I'll show you what card I made with the, I did already make a bunch of cards with that. Find it here. So here's what I did. I took, let me see. No, actually I used a different tree stamp for that card. So forget that. Oh wait, here it is. Okay, here it is. So I took and I just stamped in the background some trees on that um, craft cardstock. And then on the rose gold foil cardstock, I stamped this tree. And I used gold embossing folder. I mean, gold embossing powder. And I made, um, this is a thank you card, actually. So I like how that turned out. This um, has a die that you can get with it. If you want to, you can use this die. Yeah, that's the one that goes with that. So, very nice. All right, let me put these cards back so I don't lose them. Um, we had a Stamp Wars where we used the um, Pond Friends. So, that was a lot of fun. This is a great stamp set. And we've got our... Um, Riding the Wave, which is a combo with the turtles and then the dies. So I haven't even had a chance to play with that one yet. So I'm looking forward to using this one. So cute. This one Nancy showed you is the Feather Pleasure. And it has dies. Okay. And Chow and I made, uh, we did a duo once before with Chow where we made angel fish. It's called We're No Angels. It's got stamp and die. Super, super cute. And then I made, I had purchased these two background stamps. This one says Hope, and it has sort of like a wood uh, relief. Um, and this one is Falling Leaves. So these two are really um, nice background stamps. Yeah. Super. And I think Nancy might have showed you these before in the past. Uh, these are background stamps too. We've got the Dew, the River Rocks, and Ocean Waves, which make really great backgrounds. And they look really nice when you stamp them out. And they're super versatile. All right, so that is my little show and tell I wanted to share with you. Um, 
sort of the collection that I have of local King rubber stamps because I think it's a great company. I think Lisa is super awesome and super generous. Um, and I love playing with products from their company. So I thought what we'd do tonight is use some pan pastels and create a card with hope. This word, this one says hope. And then let's create one with the butter, um, with ink and the um, snowflakes. Is that okay with everybody to try that? I thought that would be fun tonight. All right. Nancy is having a giveaway contest on the FSC with Local King rubber stamps. So you want to make sure you check that out. She announced it just um, moments ago on her live. Well, actually, it's probably been more than moments ago, but... <laughs> oh, forgot to show you guys Ryan's Christmas present for me. This is a big jumbo size guillotine trimmer that Ryan gave me for Christmas. So thank you, Ryan. It's awesome. I'm going to cut some paper with it right now. Uh, it's got the arm that slides out and it's maximum capacity. So you could put a big 12 by 12 piece of paper in here if you want to. So thank you, Ryan. <laughs> he says that's only gift number one. Well, you're so sweet. All right, so I'm just using some um, paper from Michaels. This is the Recollections 110 pound white cardstock. And the reason why I like to use this with, with pan pastels, it's really smooth. It's not the same as Bristol Smooth, but it's really close as far as the smoothness. All right, so let's trim this down. And we will go ahead and create something tonight. In case you um, didn't hear me say that Nancy's having a giveaway on the FSC. She's got some really cool stamps from Local King Rubber Stamps. And I uh, hope that you will check that out. And make sure that you... Um, Check it out so that you can possibly win some free stamps from Local King Rubber Stamps. And it looks like Chow, thank you Chow, just um, uh, posted the link to the FSC. So that cutter does a great job. This is a really nice guillotine trimmer. I love it. Yep, very, very nice. And I certainly needed it. My my guillotine trimmer is really nice. Nancy got me one. It's just a smaller one, which is fine. But when you're cutting bigger pieces of paper, it's nice to have a big guillotine trimmer. Okay. Let's see here. I have some scrap paper that I'm going to lay down on my... Um, craft mat and I'm going to grab my supplies for pan pastels and we're going to go ahead and let's make some backgrounds all right I don't know if you guys are familiar with pan pastels I know some of you are, but not all of you. So I'll tell you a little bit about what they are as I'm creating. All right, so I have a couple different trays of pan pastels, different palettes, and even some that I put together um, based on some that were either given to me or that I kind of purchased open stock and this one is from fun stampers journey it's got the really cool earthy tones to it so that's really cool yes gloria there is a card swap in december and what you would need to do is go to the fsc at the top of the page where you would sign up for the card swap and the theme is birthday because january is the month for both 
Leah and Nancy's birthday. Okay, this one is metallics. And I think I got this one off of Amazon. It's got really pretty shiny metallics. This one is pastels from Fun Stamper's Journey. That'll be so pretty for Easter. And Chow's birthday's in January, too. I thought Chow was February for some reason. I don't know what I was thinking. And I got from... Um, some uh, pan pastels from Blue Night Rubber Stamps, too. So let's go ahead and do some ink blending. So what I'd like to do is show you a technique using some bright colors. So we'll go ahead with the yellows and oranges and reds and make a nice background. Okay, with pan pastels, they're high quality artist grade pastels. They're, they're smooth and they're finely um, ground down, however they do it, to be uh, kept in these pans. And they're stored in these palettes and you can easily pop out the colors and make whatever palette you would like. Um, they remind me of a like high um, high quality eye makeup, okay? They're just real smooth. They're not chalky, they're smooth. So some people wonder what, what it feels like, what the texture is, and that's how I can best explain it. We're just gonna do a real simple background to start with, sort of that looks like a, sun, a sunset. And I'm going to start with some um, fuchsia color. It's like a reddish purple color. And we're just gonna drag this across the top. And I just have a makeup applicator, you guys. It's not um, anything like you can get it at Walmart or any kind of store. Um, and that's what I'm using for this color. And I'm just dragging that across. And when you come to use your sponges, you can clean them on a paper towel and you can apply the next color when you're done. That's what's nice. You can also, of course, wash them in the sink if you'd like. This is a special tool that is made especially for pan pastels by the company SOFTT or SOFFT Soft Tools. Uh, I'm not sure if I spelled that right, but um, we're going to go in with some orange next. Okay, and we're just going to go ahead and blend that across the paper until we get a nice orange background here. Uh, with pan pastels, you don't have to apply a lot to get the effect. Um, and there's not a lot of dust or dirt afterwards. Some people worry that if they play with pan pastels, there's going to be all kinds of dust and everything. And I can assure you, it's easy to clean. It washes off your hands easily. Um, it actually washes off a lot easier than ink. Yeah. So let's go ahead and... Put some more orange in, okay, and blend those together. And then we'll do some yellow at the bottom. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna grab, a, I have a piece of scrap paper here, just so I don't contaminate my colors because my fingers were already in the purple magenta color I don't want to make a mess of my panel with my own fingers. So there you go. I mean, how quick was that? And the, and the colors are blended pretty, pretty well. I can go in with a colorless blender if I'd like to. Well, I don't know that that's really necessary. I think it I blended really nice. Um, just gonna go over it one more time with this magenta. I love the color where the magenta and the orange meet together. I think that's so pretty. And that's pretty too, where the orange and the yellow 
meet together. Okay. All right. So we've got that. I think, yeah. Hi, Luann. Yep. I'm back. I had my surgery. I'm back to work. I went back to work on Tuesday of this week. Everything's going well for me. I'm feeling good. I go back to see my surgeon in Pittsburgh on December 19th just to make sure everything is healing the way it's supposed to. But I'm really glad I got it done. And I'm really feeling better. So it was definitely, you know, rough for a couple of days. But my husband took good care of me. So I am blessed. All right. So let's not, let's go ahead and do the other background um, later. Let's just focus on pan pastels first. All right, so I'm just cleaning my hands off because I have, uh, these are not inks, these are pan pastels, which are a artist grade pastel product. You know, you've probably heard of pastel marker, pastel crayons. Well, these are pan pastels. They are um, finely and smooth and they're very silky. Um, you use a sponge applicator to apply them and you just run it across the paper and I mean I think I made that background in like two minutes it was so fast it's one of the great things about pan pastels are so so easy to use and so quickly can you create a card all right so let's go ahead and get our I'll get my Tim Holtz Stamping platform out. Okay, and we're going to put this at the corner. Oh, you have pan pastels? If you do have pan pastels, they're fun. I love playing with pan pastels. Okay, so we've got that beautiful sunset. What I think of, of a sunset when I look at it. And we're going to use this Hope from Local King Rubber Stamps. It says never let go of hope. One day you will see that it will all that it all has finally come together. What you have always wished for has finally come true to be. You will look back and laugh at what has passed and you will ask yourself how did I get through all of that? Okay. So this panel that I cut is bigger than I need for the actual stamp, but that's okay. I'll just trim it with my brand new guillotine trimmer. Hoo -hoo. So exciting. All right, let's see. We've got some ink here. This is the Catherine Puller Archival Ink Midnight. I have my Blue Knight rubber stamp handle that holds the ink pad for me, so I don't even have to get any inky fingers. All right, and let's see how this turns out. I'm excited, I've never used this stamp before. This is the first time. I could have done like a wood grain, I guess. That would have made a lot of sense. Sort of like neutral colors. We can always make another one, you know. All right, let's see how this turns out. Oh yeah, I'm just gonna go over it again because I have a craft table that dips in the middle. So a lot of times when I'm stamping, I don't get a very good impression the first time. Go ahead and try again here. Oh yeah, that looks awesome. I love it. I love pan pastels. Oh my goodness. All right, so we've got that. And we can spray this if we want um, later. Once I um, let the ink dry, you can even spray it with some shimmer if you'd like. But I think that turned out great. That is really pretty. So I'm gonna just set this aside and let it dry. 
Yeah, it's so simple and it's done. I mean, that didn't take me any time at all. It was very, very easy to do. Um, let's see here. All right. I'll do another one that looks more sort of like a wood grain color. And we're going to do a really cool technique. It's called Split Fountain that I learned from Lynn over at Blue Knight Rubber Stamp. She's got some really cool videos on her website. All right, so this time we're going to use some of the browns and earth tones. Let's see. Let's get that nice palette out. We've got that one. We've got some metallics too. That would be cool. Okay. You can even do gray. Yeah, lots of possibilities with this. Okay. Yeah, you're right, Mary. The hope is uh, sort of right there where the color transitions. Isn't that pretty? Love it. Okay. All right. Um, let's grab clean tool and we'll start with some of these. Um, brown colors. So we've got red iron oxide, burnt sienna shade, raw umber, and burnt sienna. Okay, what we're going to do is do one color in the middle to start with, and that would be our, you know, most intense color which I think is going to be this red color. This is uh, rust, I'm sorry, red iron oxide. Okay, yeah, that's a nice sort of woody color. Okay, and then up next against it, we'll go with this um, uh, raw umber. Okay. Okay, let's flip it and do the raw umber on this side. Okay. Next, we'll go and get into the uh, Burnt Sienna Shade. I'm just going to clean my sponge off on this piece of paper. So we've got uh, three different colors that are brown coming together. And then we can go back into the red iron oxide and finish it off at the bottom with the red iron oxide and the top too. Just a little bit across the top here. I'm gonna go back in with some of that so it's not exactly a wood grain background, but it's close. Hi, Jen. Yep, I'm doing very well. This is my first live since I've had surgery. I did a big happy mail opening uh, at the beginning of the 
uh, hour and then I started making some cards with pan pastels as my background. So we've got this nice earthy background. Okay. Okay, and so what I basically did was I went down the middle with my brightest color and then shaded the sides with one color brown, two color brown, and then I blended the edges um, with that red iron oxide. Okay, so we're going to stamp this and see how this turns out. First, I want to clean my stamp because I need to position it just in the right spot on my panel. Okay. I didn't clean it after I used it last time. I didn't see you jumped on Maureen how are you guys doing tonight hope everybody's having a good Thursday evening we got a lot of snow here this week where I live we got about a foot of snow and it was the real heavy kind that's hard to shovel so that was not fun I'm sorry my camera's shaking I'm really pushing hard here just because my table has a dip in it. Oh yeah, that turned out really nice. Yeah, this background stamp is a winner. I would definitely recommend it. Look at that, you guys. So this is sort of like the more masculine version, right? Hello, welcome. Okay, there it is. So we've got two versions using the same stamp set from Local King Rubber Stamps. I think they turned out great. Yep, I'm really glad I got that background stamp. I think I can really get a lot of mileage out of it. Not only using pan pastels, but also any kind of inks. It's really going to go a long way in my collection. And I love the word hope. So when I saw it, it really spoke to me. Okay. Let's go ahead and... Finish these two cards. Yeah, I love pan pastels for making backgrounds. It's so quick and easy. Doesn't take hardly any time at all. Just think of all the color combinations you could use. You can make a rainbow background. Wouldn't that be pretty? Yeah. I'm going to just use my smaller trimmer to trim this. Oh, one thing that you do have to do with pan pastels, you have to set them. Um, you can use hairspray, which is what I use, or you can use, well, I use hairspray when I'm inside in the winter time. You can also use Krylon matte medium spray as a sealant, all right? Hey, there's Stephanie. I don't know if you were here, Stephanie, when I was showing off all your beautiful cards earlier. But I was, Stephanie. Yep, Suzette, they are. They're simple. And they really 
I think are very, um, I don't know, they're just, I don't know, they're just really, like, visually, visually just draws your eye to it. I don't know. I think they would make, you know, all occasion card can be thank you card, birthday card, get well card, you name it. It's definitely a card that you, you'll definitely get a lot of use out of. All right, so we've got two card panels, nice trim down, and I'm going to use some hairspray to set the pan pastels. So if you guys can just hold on one second, I'm going to spray. And thank you, Mary. And um, thanks, Barbara. Thanks, Sherry. Thanks, Caffeine. I'm glad you guys like them. Hi, Joyce. How are you? We are spraying our panels so that the pan pastels get set and don't smear for our card recipients. I just need to trim this down a little bit more, you guys, because I missed a spot. Good. All right, and I'm gonna spray this one with hairspray. <laughs> What's nice, you don't have to go outside when you use hairspray. And I just use this um, uh, Mega Hold hairspray. That's what I use. Okay. Oh, Stephanie, I love them. So pretty. They're so talented. All right. Okay. So this could be matted on a piece of white card base. I think that really looks nice on there. And we can also do the same with this, but because this sort of looks like wood grain, I would rather get my embossing folder out that looks like a wood embossing folder, and I would emboss it with some dark paper in the background, some dark brown, and then I think I would mat it on craft card stock or black. Let me see if I have a card base here that's black. Do, 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 do. Thank you, Christine. Christine is super talented. I love your cards, Christine. They remind me of vintage cards, sort of like Victorian. So pretty. So here we have a black card base. We can mat it on that. And the same goes with the sunset color background. So there's so many options. Hi, Susie. Yeah, I think it would look nice on craft paper too. Yeah. I think if I have the embossing folder in the background, either in craft that I ink blend, that would look nice, I think, or um, a dark color. That's what I would do for that one. I would put some kind of wood grain embossing folder. I don't have a 3D wood grain embossing folder. I think Ryan does. It's really, really cool. Um, I've been looking for one. I haven't found one, but that would look nice. Oh, wait a minute. I want to keep this one on white. I think it looks better on white. That's okay, Susie. I'm glad you got to talk to your son. We're just playing with pan pastels and Local King rubber stamps. So this is the Hope background stamp, Local King rubber stamps. So it turned out great, didn't it? Don't you guys agree? Love it. Um, do we wanna do another one? Or do I wanna save this for another time? <laughs> Nancy, uh, were you speaking to the single son, Susie, that you told us about the other night? <laughs> <laughs> Let me clean my stamp. <laughs> All right. 
right, let me just clean the stamp and put it away. Okay. All right. Thank you, Ryan. They're just simple cards, nothing fancy. Nothing fancy. Let's get some ink, let's get inky. We'll do one more background. We'll do um, this one from Local King Rubber Stamps. I'll grab my Catherine Puller uh, blue inks. She's got so many pretty colors. All right, so I grabbed my lightest blue color that I have is called It's a Boy. That's my lightest blue. And then I have lots of other really cool blues. This one is called Suede Shoes. Yeah, 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 that would look great. And probably should grab one more color, but I don't know which one to grab. Um. Maybe Fiesta Blue. Let's see here. Sort of a mid-tone. Sort of tealy. What about this one? Well, that's definitely teal. My other option is Daydream from the Spa Collection. Or Juniper. Yeah, let's do Juniper Mist. That'll be our very, there we go. All right, I have it in mind what I think will look nice. And we will go with that. Now I am going to get the Bristol Smooth out for this because I like ink blending with Bristol Smooth. I'm going to grab my blending brush, which I only need one because I use this blue for all of my blues. Okay, and let's see here. I have some Bristol Smooth pre-cut. Grab a piece of that. And a piece of paper to protect my mat. I try to keep my mat as clean as possible, you guys. I do have some mats that are kind of grungy, but try to keep this one. So I just got a piece of scratch paper that's printed on one side that would otherwise have just gone in the garbage. All right, let's go ahead and blend. Now, we want to, oh, for Pan Pastels, Bristol Smooth is the, yeah, you want me to swatch them? I can do that. Yes, I can do that. Okay, I'll swatch them. Uh, I do have a book where I keep uh, some stamp um, the, the swatches, I do have it in my book. Um, well, my swatch book, that's what it's called. Okay, since you guys know I like trees, let's go ahead and swatch it with that little tree. It's a little Gina K tree from one of her stamp sets. Okay. All right, got this light color is called It's a Boy. Nice light blue. Okay, we got the light blue. And Nancy's right, pan pastels are such a great medium to work with that really any kind of paper you have is going to work. I prefer the Bristol Smooth. I also have that Recollections brand. Um, a lot of times Bristol Smooth is just a little bit too pricey and so having the Recollections 100 pound cardstock is a nice backup plan. That one's called Suede Shoes. Oh my, that's bright. Pretty. It's a pretty color. And Finally, we've got Juniper Mist. 
I think this is going to be more of a navy blue. Yeah. So I think those will go well together for the purpose of this card. And I hope that I can blend it well um, and leave some light color in the middle, just like it is on the picture. This one's called Snowflakes. I just want to get it out of the packaging so that I have sort of like a way to eyeball. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Having trouble with packaging. Okay. So let me make sure my piece of paper is big enough. You know, I want to make sure I get as much of that snowflake background in as I can. I think I did pretty good on cutting that. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to start with my light color. This is It's a Boy, Catherine Puller, It's a Boy. Okay, and if you look at the picture, we've got that in the middle. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Cheryl, to emboss the snowflakes in white. Oh, that's right. You should emboss the snowflakes first and then color them. Great save, Cheryl. You're my, you're my hero tonight. Sometimes I get things in the wrong order. Okay, sometimes I do. So I'm glad that Cheryl... Oh, there's some heavy-duty acetate, you guys. I'm not kidding you. Lisa does not skimp with her packaging. Okay, we're going to first emboss with white embossing powder this stamp. Okay. All right. Don't forget your embossing, buddy, because you don't want to have my fingers, like, contaminate that as I touch it. So I'm going to grab my little embossing powder bag. Okay. Oh, yeah, I got this razzle dazzle. Let's use that. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Hold on a second. Now I'm getting excited. I've got this Versamark dazzle. Have you guys used this before? Dazzle embossing ink. Super pretty. Okay. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, so let's grab a piece of black cardstock. Let's grab our little tree that we were using to swatch with. This is called Dazzle and it's Frost. It's Versamark Dazzle. It says Archival Oil-Based Ink. You can't really see it on this. Let me get a piece of blue cardstock instead. I know it'll show up on blue because that's what I did before. Where's my blue? Blue, blue, blue. Maybe I didn't put enough ink on it either. There we go. All right. So. Let me go from side to side so you can see what I'm talking about here. This embossing ink probably has mica in it. So it's probably your traditional Versamark ink with some shiny, splendid, shimmery in it. It's called Dazzle Frost. Okay, and I also have it in Champagne. Let's try the champagne, which is sort of a gold color. Ooh, look at that. Okay, let's try that one next. Just for the fun of it. 
while we are while we're experimenting here. Okay, I'm gonna clean my little tree off. I'm gonna flip it to the other side and I'm going to stamp my tree with this color, which is called Champagne. Versamark Dazzle Champagne. This is gonna be pretty. See that? So it's a watermark ink with mica in it. And that one has champagne color, gold kind of sparkle. Hopefully you can see that okay on the screen. Hopefully I'm not too close. And this one is the frost. Okay, so just to make things different, we're gonna use the frost instead of just our regular Versamark. It's still gonna be embossed over top of it with white embossing powder, so it doesn't really matter that much, but it'll be fun. You're not gonna see it because I'm stamping it on white paper, but if you were stamping it on black paper like I did, you can really see it. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Like, why would you emboss over something like that? It's so pretty. But this would be, uh, this ink would be for um, if you wanted to just create a card with some dark cardstock, like blue or black, and then just specifically stamp. I mean, I could see stamping a whole bunch of trees of all different sizes. That would make a really pretty card. That would, that's so pretty. Okay, well, we're just gonna use that because I just feel like being different. Okay, so go ahead and take my little powder bag, which is getting low on powder. Look, you guys, it's almost completely flat. So I've really gotten a lot of powder out of this. Whoops, am I off screen? I'm sorry. <sighs> okay. Yeah, that would, yeah, that would be, let's see. Is this background a shadow stamp? It is, you can ink blend onto Lisa's amazing stamps and the snowflakes will remain white. Are you serious? So what you're saying is, and I think it's a shadow stamp. Let's look. So what you're saying is I can ink blend right onto the stamp and the snowflakes will remain white. Oh, let's see. Hmm, nobody seems to know. I'm waiting to see if anybody has the answer. Is this considered a shadow stamp? <laughs> okay. All right, so what we'll do then, we will ink blend directly on top of the stamp, but I am going to line it up first to make sure that I have it properly placed in my stamp positioning tool. I will start with Distress Oxide ink. Okay, Chow, I'm gonna trust you, my friend, and grab my Distress Oxide inks. Okay. What color should we use? Uh, I want to find that pretty tumble glass, right? What do you think? Tumble glass? And then some, let's see, we've got Stormy Sky, Mermaid Lagoon. I think that would be a nice combo. I don't know. I'm not really good at deciding which color to stress oxides to use. Okay, so I don't know. Probably I need Ryan's help. I need help, Ryan. What color should I use? Okay. 
All right, we'll go with something like that. Okay, I kept my other blues out too, just in case. Grab my Distress Oxide Blending Brush. Keep my Distress Oxide Blending Brushes separate from my pigment and dye inks. Okay. All right, we'll use Blue Print Sketch, as Chow says. Okay, let's grab my very old and dirty. I'm gonna clean this brush off real good, you guys. And all I do is take a microfiber towel and just wipe the ink right off. That's what I do. That's how I clean my brush. Now this is a different brush than the brush I showed you earlier. This brush I use for my Catherine Puller inks because this is dye ink. This is for my Distress Oxides. Different brushes. Okay. I'm so nervous. I've never done this before, you guys. I'm like so nervous it's not going to work. But I trust you. I trust you. Um, I, I feel like I want to start with tumbled glass just because... If you look at this picture, you've got light and then gradually darker. Yeah, the snowflakes are indented. Yep, it's a shadow stamp. I understand now. It takes me a while, you guys, but I get it. Okay, let's go ahead and try our shadow stamp. Okay, Anne-Marie, I'll start from light to dark. That's what I will do. I'm just going in a circle. Right on the stamp. Okay, there's some tumbled glass. Next, we'll go into faded jeans. Hey, Jody. I'm going to start outside that circle that I just did and just make a circle on my stamp. Whoops, I kind of want to cross the middle. That's <laughs> all right. It'll be okay. Now I'm going in little circles so I can get some nice coverage of this color. And this is my faded jeans. Okay, next we'll do blueprint sketch. And I'm just going to color this in on the edges with Blueprint Sketch. I'm going to blend it so that it's even on all sides. I don't want to have one side that's darker than the other. Make a big circle. Okay, moment of truth. I'm so nervous. I have a mess here. Hi, Kim. Hello. Joe, I better put my glasses on so I can read your names. Yep, Joe. Hi, Jody. Sorry, Jen, I just saw your text where you said tumbled glass, salty ocean, and blueprint sketch. 
I was close, Jen. I, I used faded jeans instead. Oh, that's pretty. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it's very faint and it's got the snowflakes. Okay, so I'm going to go over it again with the blueprint sketch on the edge. And then I'll work my way back into the middle. So, because that's the last color I used on my brush. Yeah, put my glasses on, Kim. I wear them all day for work. I thought I could get away with it tonight when I'm crafting. I'm going to just add blueprint sketch a little bit heavier. I think I might have been being too um, timid in my application of the ink. Because I'm worried because I've never done this before. So I'm like, what am I doing? I didn't realize this was a shadow stamp. <laughs> Hi, Lori. All right. Now I'm going to go with a lighter color. I'll use Salty Ocean like Jen recommended. Okay. Now I'm getting a lot more ink on my stamp. You can see that. I'm gonna blend it so that it's not kind of laying there like that in the middle because that's not what I want. I don't want that to be laying like that in the middle because I want it to be circle, like a circle. Okay. Oh, thanks, Suzette, for watching. It was so nice to hang out with you. And thank you for the beautiful card. Good night. Okay. And then the final color will be tumbled glass. And I probably could go over the entire panel with tumbled glass without really worrying about it. it would be a nice way to blend all the inks together. Still have a lot of salty ocean on my brush, so just give me a second to clean it off. Yeah, you could blend on the paper too after stamping, right. There's little stars or snowflakes where I'm right now applying the ink. You probably can't see them on camera, but they're little tiny snowflakes. Okay, let's see if that does anything. Okay, that's pretty. Okay, I'm just going to blend over the entire stamp now. Whatever color is left, I want to stamp on the paper. Okay. I have a really nice sentiment for the middle of this already ready to go. Oops, sorry. Okay, so it's it's um it reminds me it reminds me of like when we were little and we had crayons and we would put a piece of paper over a texture and then take the crayons and scribble over top of it. That's sort of what it reminds me of. 
So it's really different, Jen. I've never used a stamp like this either. I didn't realize that it was a shadow stamp when I bought it. So I'll have to watch um, Local King Rubber Stamps YouTube channel and get some hints and some pointers on how to do this. I, I, I almost want to spray this with water because it's distressed oxide and I know like it'll react if I spray it. I think that would be pretty. So I'm just going to apply some pressure here, try to get the rest of that ink off of that stamp. Okay, so I got a little bit better of impression there. I don't know if you can see the snowflakes there. It's pretty. It's pretty. All right, let's grab this really cool sentiment that I actually cut the other day. And it matches perfectly. You're not going to believe it. That really was not planned, you guys. It just happened that way. Okay, so I'm going to get my trimmer out again. And this will be my last card for the night. I'll definitely check out Lisa's channel, Local King Rubber Stamps, and learn more about this stamp. She does such a nice job demonstrating all of her products and how to use them. But thank you for letting me know that's what this was, a shadow stamp. Oh, my gosh. I didn't even realize that's what it was. Yep, I could use a... Oh, yeah. I could use um, a gel pen and make my snowflakes whiter. I can also, using the pads and the, the edges, Candace says, I think I might try using the pads on the stamp and brush blend the edges. Oh, I think I know what you mean, Candace. So you're talking about stamping directly with the ink. Like this? Is this what you mean, Candace? Like this? Maybe? Is this what we're supposed to do? I don't know. <laughs> really, I didn't realize this was a... Okay, Mary says, yep, that's what you're supposed to do. And then do we... Blend the middle so it's, um, oh, blend on the stamp. What am I blending? Am I just blending the color that I laid down or a different color? That's my, that's where I'm a little confused. Oh, I'm sorry that you couldn't hear me. I didn't realize the sound went out again. All right, let's try that, if that's what we're supposed to do. Okay, let's just grab a piece of paper here. This is my Accent Opaque 80 pound paper. And we can always blend on the paper too, you guys. So if this doesn't look so good, I can always blend on the paper. I don't know why my sound keeps going out. One thing I can think of is my internet keeps going out. It could be why. Oh my, that's gorgeous. Okay. Thank you, Anne Marie, or whoever told me to do that, Mary. Oh, wow. That's pretty. And then um, you can always blend on the paper to lighten up that middle a little bit. Well, thanks, Ryan. It took me a while, but we figured it out together. It took me a while. <laughs> That's pretty cool. 
Okay, so I'm just blending the middle a little bit so it doesn't look so, I don't know. And then, wow. Merry Christmas. Perfect. Thank you, Mary and Anne Marie. Thank you. Kim, you're funny. I don't know if you mean my Catherine Puller mini inks. I don't know if that's what you're talking about. These are a dye-based ink. And the Distress Oxides are the other kind of ink. So I didn't know that you could use two inks together. I do think a lighter color in the middle, you know, would definitely... Be pretty but I just need to I need to practice a little bit more this is the first time I ever used this kind of stamp but I'm really liking that how dramatic that is that's pretty and that was easy that wasn't hard to do I just inked the blueprint sketch like that and then take your light color which would be your tumble glass and blend the middle so Susie, this is from Local King Rubber Stamps. It's called Snowflakes. It is a shadow stamp. Okay. Okay, let's go in with some tumble glass and blend that middle. Okay, somebody said go ahead and stamp right on your ink right on the okay that'll work I think that's gonna look nice yep okay this is um accent opaque 80 pound paper Yep. It's a Local King rubber stamps. Just imagine how quickly you can make Christmas cards with that stamp. I'm liking it. I like it a lot. I didn't even know it was a shadow stamp when I bought it. I had no idea. So thank you guys for watching tonight. I really learned a lot from you. That kind of took a turn that I wasn't expecting, but it was fun. And now I know I have a shadow stamp. I know how to use it. So that was a lot of fun learning from you. Um, Kim, it's just the cardstock that I had on hand. I'm not, I'm not saying that it's the best cardstock for this technique. It's just that I had it pre-trimmed already in my supply here it's the same cardstock that i use to stamp on when i'm creating cards and um i do have a heavier pound weight of the accent opaque i have a hundred pound as well i like both of them um but that's just what i grabbed so that's why I used it. That's the only reason. Um, I wasn't planning. I didn't know that I had a shadow stamp until the other people that are watching the live explained to me what it was. I had no idea. I've never had one before. So I was kind of just winging it. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. And now we can just trim this up and put some gems on the snowflakes of course we can spray this with shimmer spray wouldn't that be pretty that would be super pretty i'm liking this i can see myself mass producing some christmas cards with this stamp you could do pink you could do purple 
You can do any color of inks that you want. It doesn't have to be blue. But I'll definitely practice more. That's Blueprint Sketch. That's the blue uh, Distress Oxide that I used. Blueprint Sketch. And I just took Blueprint Sketch and covered the entire card panel with that. I mean, I didn't cover the card panel. I covered the stamp. Isn't that pretty? I think that's so pretty. Okay, so we've got a white card base. And that really pops. I like it. Thanks, Ryan. You could do a lot with this, couldn't you, Ryan? Oh, yeah. Yep, you could cut an oval in the center for your sentiment. Of course, that would be nice. Either way, it's pretty. And that sentiment goes really well, doesn't it? I think that's one uh, die that I got from uh, Cindy Ollendorf. Isn't that pretty? It's perfect. Well, I thank you all for joining me tonight. Sorry this live took a long time. I wasn't expecting to go two hours. But I love that you hung in there with me and we learned something new. This again is the Local King Rubber Stamp Snowflakes Shadow Die. Thanks everybody for watching. And um, I'll take some pictures once I finish these cards. So be on the lookout for the finished product on the Foiling Snobs Club. And it did go fast. You're right. Have a great night, everybody. Bye-bye. Good night.